Good morning. As I welcome you to worship this morning, it seems strange that I am here in my house, recording a service, speaking to a camera. I was booked to preach in Blantyre Old today with Sarah on a break after a busy Easter. But the lockdown has paid, put paid to that. It's strange how much changes when you're stuck in the house. The inside of my car has not been that clean since the day I brought it out of the showroom. My workshop floor has actually been hoovered. Jobs in the back burner are now getting done. By the time lockdown ends we should be well ahead of sh schedules set years ago but never caught up on. Even so there is a downside. The interaction between people. Church plays a big part in that. To think that last Sunday was Easter and I never entered a church. During Holy Week and Easter Sunday, I just was not there and neither were you. It would have been unheard of in any other circumstance. As I speak to you from cyberspace, I pray that you are well and taking care of yourselves. With the good that is coming out, in people during this pandemic, I thought I would talk a bit today on how we interact with the less fortunate. The sermon title is Who is Your Neighbour? I have incorporated the Bible readings into the talk. But first, let us pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, let us, in the strangest of times, still offer up our thanks for the love you have shown us at this time. While the world around us is in panic, let us calm our hearts as we think of the love and the grace you have shown us over the years. Pandemics, we realise, are nothing new. Tragedies have always come upon your people. We have lived through viruses, wars and famines and come out the other end. Father, we pray that, as in the past, lessons will be learned and then be remembered. Where our hearts go out to our neighbours. We pray that this will continue after the pandemic is over. We also pray for those looking in on these services especially those that do not attend the church. May they come to realise that a church is a place, not just a gathering point for your followers, but a family. We pray for those that can no longer attend our church due to age and frailty. And may the skills learned during this lockdown continue to ring bring the church into their homes. We pray for those that are ill with any ailment, that your healing hand can be upon them. We pray for those that mourn, especially at this time of lockdown, when funeral services are so reduced. We pray they can feel your love and know our prayers are with them. We pray for ourselves as a church family that we can stay together in your love until we gather again in your house and in your name. Father, hear the prayers we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this moment of crisis, we are witnessing a phenomenon of neighbourly love. We are seeing the best in people. Yes, some are breaking curfew. Some have decided that the rules are not for them. But, on the whole, we are seeing the best in many. People going out of their way to check on neighbours they possibly only have had a nodding acquaintance with. The first reading today is from Isaiah, and I'm reading Isaiah 35, 3 to 7. 
strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with a vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the, the ears of the death unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Waters will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling with springs. In the haunt where the jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. From this reading from Isaiah, it was a speech designed to lift the heart of an exiled nation. We are in a similar situation in this lockdown. We are in fear of an enemy. That may be a virus, rather than a horde of Babylonians. But we need that encouragement. Be strong and do not be afraid. God is coming to your rescue. He could be speaking to us today as we listen to the news hour after hour. We are all, all but ready to share this alarm and despondency if we can find an audience. It is no use. We are doomed. We have been shut out of our churches. Today I should have been preaching to you from the pulpit of your church but the doors are closed. For years we have called out, we cannot, go, we cannot do anything to reach a community that has no interest in God. Well, guess what? Statistics now show there is a large undertaking and a large uptake of these services by people that have never graced a church door. We have been forced out into the community and the community has responded. We are using a medium they understand. The blind will see, the deaf will hear. This can be taken as literally as in what our Lord did to cure those ailments. Or it can be taken spiritually where this deafness and blindness are blockages to seeing the truth of the gospel. The lame will leap and dance, and those who cannot speak will shout for joy, and the barren wilderness will be transformed. If you look deep enough, there is a beautiful vision in these verses. God is letting those outside the church see the dream that we all follow. It will be up to us to build on that momentum. And the vision we have to portray will be one of a world with God in control. Who do we tell? Tell everyone who is discouraged. There are plenty around at this moment looking for hope. The vision starts in the hearts of a congregation of a church. It is in the hearts of those who attend, but it cannot and should not stay there. It is up to you to spread it far and wide. Be careful, because a vision can be destroyed by wrong attitudes. That leads us to our second reading from the book of James. I'm reading James chapter 2 verses 14 to 17. Faith and Deeds What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without food and daily clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? 
in the same way. Faith by itself, by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Amen. I'd like to tell you the tale of Pastor Jeremiah Stepek. He had just been elected head of a mega church in America. On the day he was to be presented to the congregation, he dressed as a tramp, unshaven, dirty clothes, the standard shuffle. He went into this 5,000 plus church and tried to beg money. He was shunned, hassled and blocked out. Only three people spoke to him. When he took a seat at the front, he was moved to the back. When the time came for his introduction, people clapped, but no one appeared. Then he stood up and shuffled forward. There was silence. He preached on this passage from James. He told them of the welcome he had got that morning. He sent them away, saying, Today I see a gathering of people, not a church of Jesus Christ. Well, there is little evidence this actually occurred. It rings an alarm bell in the Christian's mind. It reminds me of the parable of the Good Samaritan. It is a prime example of just how we, the professing Christians, are ready to walk by on the other side. I had a skip business up in Oban. I received a call from Ian Cleaver. Ian owned the Dalmali Hotel and the Highland Heritage Tours. He wanted advice on waste disposal. I called in at the hotel reception. It was a Saturday. I was driving that day as my driver was off. I had already been busy and it is not a clean job. This a young Australian lass was on reception. She looked me up and down. I had a folder in my hand. I tried to give it to her. She asked me to wait and she phoned through to the office. Ian asked, who is it? Jim Paxson. Send him up. As she led me along the corridor, she stopped and turned to me and said, Sorry, but who are you? I have Savile Row suits arrive in Rolls Royces and Mr Cleaver will not see them. You turn up looking like that and all, in, all hail and hearty, you're invited into a room few has ever seen. My dear, the suits wanted something from Mr Cleaver. I have something Mr Cleaver wants. <coughs> Please remember, today we have something the world wants. Young or old, please be ready to share the good news. Last week, in the strangest of circumstances, we celebrated Easter. Jesus was adamant that we be ready to help the less fortunate. But many of us do so at arm's length. We do shoeboxes for the shoebox appeal, backpacks for Mary's meals. We fill boxes to be handed into the food bank and some of us have made outstanding orders to help fund it. We have a willingness to help. I have seen this church in action. My respect for you all grew tenfold when I witnessed just how ready you were to get hands on. You have a love that you are prepared to share. Please never lose that. With the current situation, it's all too easy to be critical. We have the coronavirus, 
We have the refugee crisis. We have the immigrant crisis. With so many criticisms flashing around in cyber space, it is so easy to join with a judge's in with a judgmental response. Look, they're going out. Look, they've got visitors. That is twice today they've gone for a walk. On the refugees. What? Keep them out. Let them in. Send them home. Give them a home. What is the cost? What will it cause us to lose? Why should they get a house when locals have been on the housing list for years? We all have our own opinions, thoughts and concerns. But we must ask, when he walked among us, what would Jesus have done? <coughs> he could have been compassionate. He fed the 5,000. He fed the 7,000. He helped the marginalised in his community. If we are taking it in by a flash suit and an eloquent turn of phrase, we may find a shallow outcome. I, the scruff, got into Ian's office. The suits did not. James 2 verses 14 to 7 point out that no matter how much we profess, to have a faith, if it does not lead to actions, you are doing nothing to prove your faith. There is no substance in wishing them well if you are not prepared to give them the wherewithal to lift them from their current situation. Whatever we do, it must start with prayer. Intercessory prayer is all about our concerns for others. If we are too choosy, we will leave many out. If we are too extravagant, we will offer God a shopping list. Whatever we do, we must empathise with those we pray for. For God wants us to care. He also wants us to work towards getting others in. As, Lord, as Pastor Stepek put it, Today I see a gathering of people, not, <coughs> not the Church of Jesus Christ. The world has enough people, but not enough disciples. When will you decide to become a disciple? Being a Christian is more than something you claim. It is something you live by and share with others. As Christians, you, here in this church, stack up pretty high. But to fill empty pews, you need to become disciples. Are you ready? Amen. Thank you for sharing this thought today. Today we are in a similar situation to the first Christians. After the resurrection, the first Christians went into lockdown, fearing what was outside their four walls. Jesus went to his disciples in the locked room. In the same way, Jesus is being invited into many locked homes. Let us pray. O oh, Father God, as we close this reflection, Guide our hearts and our thoughts as we remember you for what you mean to us. As we remember our church family of what they do for us. Guide us as we close this reflection and retreat into our own wee space. Keep us safe until we meet again in person or in cyberspace. You are our God, for whom we give praise. Blessed be the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.